Will the tragedy in Tucson usher in the era of civility President Obama called for last night? How will both parties get back to the business of facing our common challenges? Here to take on those questions this morning, one of the rising stars of the Republican Party, New Jersey Governor Chris Christie. Thanks for coming in this morning. Thank you, George. So did the president strike the right chords last night? Yes. What did you think of the speech? I said I thought it was ex excellent. I thought he did exactly what you want a leader to do at a moment like this, which is to remind us of the things that we have in common, remind us of the things that unite us rather than divide us, and to, to not try to play politics at all. And the president hit all those things last night. So I'm, 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 I was really happy uh, to see what he did. You're out there all the time with your constituents. I know you're doing another town hall meeting today. Is, is this something that you expect? It, does it feel to you like this is a, a moment for the entire country? Yeah, I think, listen, we have to be reflective. I think we should be having this kind of reflection on a regular basis, because as you know, I mean, this is not an unusual period of vitriol in our country. In politics, you know, you look back and, and you, you can say in almost every presidential campaign that you've seen high levels of vitriol and anger and bitter things being said about people that they probably didn't deserve to have said about them. I think we have to constantly be examining ourselves for how we act in a civilized society. It doesn't mean we can't disagree. Of course we disagree. But we should be looking at this all the time, not just have a tragedy spur us to do it, because we have to treat each other with some level of civility, uh, even when we disagree with each other. Meanwhile, Sarah Palin coming in for some criticism today after using that term blood libel. You think she knew what she was getting into with that? I don't know. I have no idea. But, but what I would say is I think that, you know, I don't think anybody really believes that you know Governor Palin was trying to uh, make some make someone get hurt uh, or bring violence on, and I think she just should have said that and left it at that. Let, let's move on to your own state of the state. You were giving a big speech this week uh, as well, and in your speech, you, you, you took credit for turning New Jersey around from being a, a basket case. But some of your critics, uh, some of the top Democrats in the state, say that your priorities are misplaced. One counted up the number of times you used the word jobs in the speech, said it was only four. Yeah. Response? Well, because we're creating jobs, not talking about it. Um, when I came into office, unemployment was over 10% in New Jersey and above the national average. We're still too high. We're at 9.2%, but we're down almost a full point in a year, and we're below the national average now. Last month in November, one still of our... Still above 9%. Yeah, I said, I said, we're not good enough yet. And when I said, I didn't say we turned it around. What I said in the speech is, the state of the state's improving, getting better every day. Uh, and But last month in November, the last wealth we have for jobs in New Jersey... One of every five job, private sector jobs created in America was created in New Jersey. So our policies are helping to create jobs and create a positive business environment where the private sector wants to grow again. You know, you could talk all you want about jobs. It's about creating them and putting people back to work. One of your big issues also is education reform. The former chancellor of the D.C. schools, Michelle Rhee, was in the audience watching your speech. The president has also hit those themes of education reform a lot. Is this an issue? where Republicans and Democrats can find common cause. Absolutely. I, absolutely. And Michelle Reed's a Democrat. I had Mayor Cory Booker of Newark in the audience as well. We're working on reforming the Newark Public Schools together with the help of Mark Zuckerberg from Facebook and the challenge grant he's given to the city of Newark. And I, I've said from the time of the campaign when I was running in 2009 that yeah, President Obama and I agree on this issue, agreed much more than he did with my predecessor on the issues of real education reform. This is, this is the transformational issue that can also bring both parties Parties together. If we just rise above the interests, the special interests that want to protect a failed status quo. Tip O'Neill said all politics is local. You came in from, for some criticism after the post-Christmas blizzard, including from former mayor of New York, Rudy Giuliani. If he asked me my advice, yeah. I would have said they elect your governor. Yeah. They got an emergency. They expect you to be there. You, you, you know, uh, there's, you, you got to be there if you are a governor a mayor, or even a president, if it's, if it's important. Enough. He said he shouldn't have been in Disney World. No, listen, I know you'll find it shocking that two strong-willed Italian guys from the Northeast <laughs> disagree about something. I have great respect for the mayor. We disagree on this one, uh, but we agree on so many more issues that uh, Mayor Giuliani and I, two former U.S. attorneys, um, will disagree at times on things. This is one that we do. Finally, uh, Rush Limbaugh has something of a man crush on you. <laughs> he and many others are, are trying to get you into the presidential race. You've said time and time and time again, you're not running. I take you at your word, but try to encapsulate what you think the Republican Party needs, who they need to nominate, what kind of a person in 2012. We need to nominate someone who the American people believe will actually walk the walk 
and not just talk the talk on reducing the size of government and bringing our tax structure and our spending, most importantly, under control. And that person has to prove they're willing to do the difficult things, not just talk about them, because uh, they've heard plenty of talk, especially from our party. And, you know, I said this this fall when we were campaigning for Republican candidates around the country, this is the Republican Party's last chance. It's put up or shut up time for us now that we've won the House. We better do what we said we were going to do, or we're going to get sent to the wilderness without a compass for a long time, George, and we're going to deserve it because we've talked about it. Now let's do it. Okay, Governor Christie, thanks very much for coming in this Thank morning. Thank you, George.